Sorry about that. Hi everyone, this is Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another prophetic biblical read-along. Okay, we will be reading out of uh, Ezekiel chapter 17, so please open up your Bibles and let's get started. I don't have a lot of time because I'm doing this between lessons, and one of my students is absent today. So, let's get right to it. Alright, so Ezekiel 17. Alright. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, and speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, A great, a great eagle with great wings. So this is, the, um, this is the two eagles that you saw in the beginning in the video, okay? And the two eagles, who are they, you know? So a great eagle with great wings, long-winged, full of feathers, which, has, which had divers colors, came in unto Lebanon, and took the highest branch of the cedar, he cropped off the top of, of his young twigs and carried it into a land of traffic. He set it in, in a sorry in a city of merchants. He also sorry he also took of the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree. Yes, and it grew and became a spreading vine of low stature, whose branches turned towards him, and roots thereof were under him. So it became a vine, and brought forth branches, and shot forth sprigs. There was also another great eagle with great wings and many feathers, and behold, this vine did bend her roots towards him. This is the second eagle, okay? All right. And shot forth her branches towards him, that he might water it by the furrows of her plantation. It was planned in good... Sorry, it was planted in a good soil by great waters, that it might bring forth branches, that it might bear fruit, that it might be a goodly vine. Uh, verse 9, Say thou, Thus saith the Lord God, Shall it prosper? Shall he not pull up the roots of thereof, and cut off the fruit thereof, that it, will, that it wither? It shall wither in all the leaves of her spring, even without great power or many people to pluck it up by, by the roots thereof. Yea, behold, being planted, shall it prosper? Shall it not utterly wither? When the east wind touches it, it shall wither in the furrows where it grew. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Verse 12, Say now to the rebellious house, Know ye not what these things mean? Okay, tell them, Behold, the king of Babylon, that's the first eagle, is come to Jerusalem, and has taken the king thereof. Okay, so that was, you know, like we said in that verse up there, he, um, he, it said here, he cropped off the top of, of his young twigs, okay? So, and he said it in the city of merchants. <laughs> so, um, so here, back to 12 here, okay? Know, it's not, know ye not what these things mean? Tell them, behold, the king of Babylon has come to Jerusalem and takes the king thereof, and the princes thereof, and led them with him to Babylon. You know, where the city of the merchants are. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And has taken of the king's seed and made a covenant with him, and has taken an oath of him. He has also, he has also taken the mighty of the land, that the kingdom might be base, that it might not lift itself up, so it'll become humbled and desolate, but that by keeping his covenant it might stand. It's not desolate. Sorry, he'll become base, humble. Did the king. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm having trouble here. I'm rushing through, sorry. Verse 15, But he rebelled against him in sending his ambassador, ambassadors into Egypt, the second eagle, that they might give him horses and much people. Shall he prosper? Shall he escape that does such things? Or shall he break the covenant and be delivered? As I live, saith the Lord God, surely in the place where the king dwells, that made him king, whose oath he despised, and whose covenant he broke, even with him in the midst of Babylon, he shall die. Neither shall Pharaoh with his mighty army and great company make for him in the war by casting up mounds, uh, sorry, casting up mounts and building forts to cut off many persons. Seeing he despised the oath by, oath by breaking the covenant, when lo, he had given his hand and hath done all these things, he shall not escape. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, as I live, surely mine oath is... Mine oath has, that he has despised, and my covenant that he has broken, even it will I recompense upon his own head. And I will spread my net upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon. And will plead with him there for his trespass, that he has trespassed against me. Okay. And his fugitives with all his bands shall fall by the sword, and they that remain shall be scattered towards all the winds. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. Thus says the Lord God, I will take the highest branch of the high cedar, and I will set it. I will crop off the top of his young wings as a tender one, and I will plant it 
upon a high mountain and eminent. In the mountain of the height of Israel will I plant it, and it shall bring forth bows, and bear fruit, and be a goodly cedar, and it and under it, sh it shall dwell all fowl of every wing. In the shadow of the branches thereof they shall dwell. Okay. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, have brought them, brought down the high tree which exalted the low tree. Okay. Have dried up the green tree and made the uh, dry tree to flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken it and have done it. Okay. So now on to verse eight. Uh, sorry, chapter eighteen. Okay, chapter 18. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? Okay. So, you know, um, this was talked about a lot in Jeremiah, Isaiah and Jeremiah, about um, Israel taking, you know, um, paying for the sins of their, of the, um, of their fathers and their ancestors, the generations that had committed sins on down the line. But it, um, that's what he's talking about here. But verse 3, As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. So this is not going to be so anymore. Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sins, it shall die. I repeat, the soul that sins shall die. Okay, because the wages of sin is death. All right, behold, I uh, sorry, uh, verse five. But if a man be just and do with, sorry, and do that which is lawful and right, and has not eaten up upon, has not eaten upon the mountains, neither has filled up his eyes to, to the idols of the house of Israel, neither has defiled his neighbor's wife, neither has come near to a menstruous woman, and has not oppressed, oppressed any but has restored to the debtor his, his pledge, has spoiled none by violence, has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment. He that, not, sorry, he that has not given forth upon usury, neither has taken any increase, that has withdrawn his hand from iniquity, has executed true judgment between man and man, has walked in my statutes and kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just. He shall surely live, saith the Lord God. If he begot... A son that is a robber, a shedder of blood, and that does the like to any of these things, and that does not any of those duties, but even has eaten upon the mountains and defiled his neighbor's wife, has oppressed the poor and needy, has spoiled by violence, has not restored the pledge, and has lifted up his eyes to idols, has committed abomination, has given forth upon usury, okay, and has taken increase. Shall he then live? He shall not live. He that does that has done all these abominations, he shall surely die, okay? His blood shall be upon him. Now, lo, if he beget a son that sees all of his father's sins which he has done and considers and, doesn't, and does not such like, that has not eaten upon the mountains, neither has lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, has not defiled his neighbor's wife, has neither has oppressed any, has not withholden the pledge, neither has spoiled by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry, and has covered the naked with a garment. Okay. That has taken off his hand from the poor, that has not received usury, nor increase, has, has executed my judgments, has walked in my statutes. He shall not die for the iniquity of his father. He shall surely live. And this is a, you know, um, this is very comforting to a lot of us because, you know, um, to put this in plain in simple terms, you know, a lot of us come from broken homes. Um, I myself come from a broken home, and uh, you know, um, this this uh, chapter eighteen is very comforting for me because you know, <laughs> if I had to bear the iniquities of my parents, I would not be here. Okay, so I mean, I have a lot of my own iniquities that I have dealt with, you know, and I have repented of. But, um, you know, I was born in a broken home, and uh, I'm a product of uh, adultery, you know, and I've had to carry that all throughout my childhood. You know, when I didn't know the Lord, I was really burdened down by that. And um, my mom and dad both did things that they should not have, they drank. They did drugs. They fooled around, had parties at our house. They, you know, cursed each other and threw things at each other. Um, they were abusive. 
you know, um, in one way or another. I mean, um, one went away, the other stayed, but the one that was with us, she was abusive, you know, and they've done a lot of things. And it's, for me, you know, you have a choice. Everybody has a choice in life. You don't have to be, you know, like your parents. There's no excuse. Everybody is responsible for their own lives. I am responsible for mine, and I have chosen a different path. Not everybody chooses a different path, though. You know, some choose, choose to just, you know, keep on the same path as what, they, what they've grown up with, and they make excuses, you know. They don't want to change. They make excuses and say, you know, well, it worked out for me, so it's okay, you know. But it's not okay. We all have, cho uh, have a choice here. And I choose <laughs> to serve the Lord. I choose to be on that straight and narrow path. And, you know, um, the Lord has called me to be on that straight and narrow path. And I am um, eternally grateful for that. And um, I just thank Him with all my heart that He has called me out of darkness so I can walk in His light. But it's a choice. Like, you know, He can call. It's like a parent that calls. Like, sometimes I call my son, and I know he can hear me, but he ignores me because he wants to keep on playing his video game. You know, it's like that. You know, we have a choice. Even then, when he calls us, do we answer him? Do we say, yes, here I am, Lord, like Samuel, or do we just keep on doing what we want to do? You know, but the soul that sins dies. And, you know, in order to escape, to escape eternal death, you need the blood of Jesus Christ. You need Yeshua HaMashiach in your life, okay? And you need to surrender your life to him because he gave it all for you. Okay, so anyway, moving on. Um, so, uh, where was uh, Verse 18, As for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, spoiled his brother by violence, and did that which was not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet say ye, why? Does not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son has done which is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes, and has done them, he shall surely live. The soul that sins dies. Okay, the soul that sins, it shall die. Okay, that's verse 20. Again, he says it a second time. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. So, if you know, um, do not think that um, your father and your mother should bear your sins. Especially if you're at an age where you know better. Everyone is responsible for themselves. All right? So you can't blame your mom and dad. Oh, they didn't love me enough when I was a kid. I'm not blaming my parents. You know, they were, they did a lot of things, but I do not blame my parents for anything that I've done since I've grown up and moved out. What I've done that was wrong since, you know, I am responsible for my own life and I take full responsibility and I repent when needed. And, you know, we all need to be grown-ups here. There's too many people um, playing the blame game. You don't have time for that. Okay? So anyway, moving on. Um, so verse 21. But if the... Um, sorry. But if the wicked will turn from all of his sins he has committed and keeps all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and he shall not die. All of his transgressions that he has committed... They shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he, shall, that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, says the Lord God, and not he should return from his ways and live? But when the righteous turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All of his righteousness that he has done shall not be mentioned. In his trespass he, shall, he has trespassed, and in his sin he has sinned. In them, in them he shall die. Okay. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, o, Lord, o house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? You know, we all say, oh, God's not fair. That's not fair. You know, he's cruel and he's mean to us. But it's not him that's mean and cruel. It's us. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and dies in them, for his iniquity that he has done, he shall die. Again, when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness and he has, that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Because he considers and turns away from his transgressions that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet saith the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal. 
Yeah, see how they are? They're contradictory here. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal, and are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you, make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. You see, the Lord doesn't want any of us to perish, okay? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Basically, he says, repent. I don't want to see you die. I don't want you to see you condemned in hell. Repent and turn to me. Okay, with that said, I bless you all in the mighty name of Yeshua Shik. I'm out. Love you. Goodbye.